Problem 1 from Section B. In a survey, 1,640 out of 2,246 randomly selected adults said they text while driving. Tests the claim that the proportion of adults who text while driving is equal to 75% use the traditional method where alpha is 0.01. Okay, so first thing I want to do is find H0 and H1. So I go find the part in the question that's talking about the claim. So even though we've got information right off the bat, that may not be what's being tested. So here is the phrase claim. Test the claim that the proportion, so I'm going to be using P, of adults who text while driving is equal to. So equal is going to be my claim, and it's 75 cents that it's claiming to be equal to. So coming over to my H0 and H1 box, P equals 0.75 for my claim, and P, oh wait. So usually the claim goes in H1, because usually the claim is less than, greater than, or not equal to. But in this case, the claim was in H0, in the um, null hypothesis. So when it comes to the symbol to put in the alternate or alternative hypothesis, even though my choices are less than, greater than, or not equal to, I can't just randomly select. If my claim is H0, which means my claim is equal, we have to go with the opposite, which is not equal to. So now I'm ready to move on to the next piece. The test statistic. So I want to use the formula Z equals P hat minus P divided by the square root of P times Q divided by N. Now, why am I using that formula? Because over here, we said it is a proportion that's being tested, and this is the test statistic formula for a proportion. Now, the other piece is finding p hat. It's the first part of the formula, and I don't have p hat as I read through the sentence, but I do have the information to find p hat. 1,640 divided by 2,246 a decimal value that keeps going. So remember, I'm gonna use at least five of those digits after the decimal, not just any five, <laughs> the first five with rounding to prevent round off error. So Z equals 0 0.73019 because of rounding minus P. Ooh, what value do I use for P? Well, don't forget in H naught, we have P equals 0.75. So this P, is the P that goes into the formula, 0.75, divided by the square root of P. It's the same P I just wrote, so 75, divided by Q. Q is not given, but it's gonna be 0.25, because one minus P, or one minus 0.75, is 0.25. And then I need to divide by the square root of N, which be careful because it's so easy to just kind of want to grab the first number you see, which in this case would be wrong. So, you know, over here I have the hint that I've already used N was 2,246. Or because it says in the survey, this many out of that many selected adults. So I'm dividing by the 2,246 number. Enter all of that into my calculator to get negative 2.16814, etc. For the test statistic, I want to answer with a two-digit decimal value. So with rounding, I'll have negative 2.17. I'm ready to move on to the critical value. Now, why do I say that? Notice the question said use the traditional method, and the traditional method is the critical value method. Our other choices are to use the p-value method or a confidence interval. But this one asks for traditional and traditional means critical value. So for the critical value, I start with alpha, which is given to me as 0.01, also called the significance level. Since I have a two-tailed test, wait, why do I have a two-tailed test? How do I know this one's two-tailed? Right, because in H0, we have the not equal to sign, which means I have a two-tailed test. So because of this, I need to find alpha divided by two, and get 0 0.005. So now this is the area that is in both tails of the bell-shaped curve, the Z curve. 
So I go to the edge of the table, well, I'm sorry, I go inside the table looking for 005. And as you can see, it's a tie between 0051 and 0049. So I have the asterisk telling me to use the number negative 2.575. If not, because it's a tie, I would have averaged 2.57 and 2.58, knowing that I would have a negative value. And so I'm going to answer with plus or minus. Remember, because I have a two-tailed test and get plus or minus 0.2575. And now I need to decide whether I reject H0 or fail to reject H0. So we have this bell-shaped curve with alpha, 0 0.005 in each tail, giving me a combined 0 and 1. And that created these cutoff values, these critical values of 2575 on both sides of the curve and they create the critical region or the shady region, and I need to see where does my test statistic fall. So remembering that this is a number line down below, the negative 2.17, although left of center, is not beyond negative 2.575. The test statistic is not in the shaded region, he's not shady, so you do not reject him. So therefore, we fail to reject H0. Okay, and the last thing I need to do is write my final conclusion that I'm going to put in this bottom box. So I start off by deciding was my claim H0 or H1. So my claim is H0, and because we fail to reject H0, it's always H0 regardless of who the claim is, but following the flow chart, I need to start my conclusion off with there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that... And then I need to figure out how to word this. So I come back up here and it says, test the claim that the proportion of adults who text while driving is equal to 75%. That's actually a complete sentence that covers everything I want. So I'm just going to copy that part down. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the proportion of adults who text while driving is equal to 75%. So remember, I'm looking for the word proportion, so that you're telling me the type of study that is being evaluated. Um, some context, in this case, it's texting while driving, what the proportion is about. But specifically, is it more, or less, or in this case, equal to, and what value is it equal to? 75%.